Hey everyone, I'm Aaron from Finkdom Languages and you are watching my Friday live stream. So today what I want to talk about is reading and why reading is so important for language learning. Not just reading, but input in general. That's reading, listening, um, and that's what we're going to talk about in this live stream. Um, so if you don't know, there's a distinction between input and output, right? Output is speaking and writing while input is listening and reading. You're taking information in rather than putting it out into the world. Um, and all of those are really important things to practice, okay? But there is a special emphasis put on input, taking in information, especially um, very often during the early stages of your language learning when you don't know enough to really say very much to people. You can't have conversations really. Um, you, you can't say a whole lot. You can't write a whole lot. Um, but you can spend some time reading and listening. You won't understand everything at first. It'll take you a while to understand. Um, but that comes as you practice doing it more and more. Uh, and the reason I wanted to talk about this, reading, listening, taking an input, is because uh, I have a new language learning book coming out this week, which you guys can check out in the description uh, down below the description in this uh, live stream. And I wanted uh, to just read this quote to you guys really quick, because I think it's it really highlights uh, the importance of reading in your target language. And there's a number of reasons why reading is so important. Um, but just take a look at this quote. When people say to me, this is by Jeff McQuillan, who's a second language acquisition researcher. Uh, when people say to me, Dr. McQuillan, I need to take the TOEFL test in six months from now. What should I do? The first thing I ask them is, well, how much time do you have to spend? And they'll say, oh, I have two to three hours to spend per day. And I'll say, great, you should spend that time reading all three hours. All right, we've got a few comments over here. Moonlight Spud says, not quite ready for books, but been reading menus online and using Google Street View to practice reading shop signs and street foods, street food stalls, etc. Are you talking about in Thai? Um, uh, Kuchibat says, hello, Aaron, and everyone in the chat. Cycle Scrapping says, hello, everyone. Thanks for joining, guys. Um, so Moonlit Spud, if you are interested in a simple book for reading Thai, uh, I can send you one. Um, you know, so I've done that. Uh, you know, I've done this before. This is not the first book that I've released. Uh, my first book, let me share my screen with you guys. Uh, share screen. So let's go to Amazon. Actually, I'm going to. Okay. Um, so this is my new book, Zombie Girlfriend. My first book that I uh, wrote is called The Little Dragon or El Dragoncito in Spanish. This one exists in Spanish, French, English, uh, and Tokipona. I think that's it. Oh, and in Thai. Um, you can see it here. I'm go to my author page on Wikipedia, on uh, Amazon. Oops, it's taking a while. Yeah, so it's in French, it's in Spanish, it's in English, it's in uh, Tokipona. Um, our, the new version of my book, not the new version, but my newest book, Zombie Girlfriend is going to be in Spanish, French, English, uh, Esperanto, Tokipona, and German. Now, I just uploaded these to Amazon this week, and some of them are still in the approval process. Uh, Amazon has to approve Kindle books and paperback books um, before they go live on the site. Uh, but I'm really excited. Uh, some of them actually already are, they are live already. 
Um, so if you wanted to go by the Spanish version, the French version, the English version, uh, I think those are the only three that are live right now. But um, Toki Pona stories are um, in the uh, the approval process right now. And I believe, I guess the Esperanto one hasn't been approved yet either. But um, they should all be up and ready to purchase this week if you're interested in that. Uh, and the way that these stories work, by the way, if you are interested in that, you can check out the link um, in, the, uh, in the description below this video. So the way that these stories work, and I'm not claiming that I'm the only one uh, who, who does these. There are some really good stories. For example, um, for example, I've been reading through French stories, short stories in French by Ollie Richards. And um, this is a really nice book. I've been reading through it with my wife, who is learning French. And, uh, you know, there's images so you can, like, see what's going on. Um, they highlight some words that you might know, that you might not know in bold. Um, you know, they have little uh, summaries of the chapter. Where is it? Summaries of the chapter and uh, key vocabulary words. And then... Um, uh, like comprehension questions, which is great. The whole thing is designed for learners, which is what you want. You want to be able to read something that you can understand. Now, some people have um, the idea, uh, for example, Matt versus Japan, I believe, is a big proponent of listening and reading only material that's designed for native speakers. Um, I apologize if I am like misconstruing his position on that. Um, and other people have, you know, uh, have expressed similar things and that's fine. Um, I don't like to do that. I want to read something that's designed for people who are learning the language, you know, for people who are beginners. If I'm a beginner, I want something that was made for me, a beginner, not made for a native speaker. Um, now, with that said, very often people create beginner level material quite poorly. And what I mean by that is if I'm going to read a story in my target language, I don't want to read, this is John. John has a dog. John's dog is happy. John is happy. John likes dogs, you know, or um, John goes to the cafe. John orders coffee. John likes coffee. Okay. Um, I need something that's going to hold my attention. Okay, it has to be interesting. And it's really hard to do that, to find something that's easy enough for language learners, especially who are brand new beginners, but interesting enough to hold my attention. Ah, Forever Learning French says yes to all the Frenchy, to all, to all the French Ollie Richards books. Yes, I agree. Um, it's the only book by him that I have read or that I've purchased, but... Uh, so far, it seems uh, quite good. Um, I don't know, like, okay, this is, yeah, this says A2 to B1, um, right? Like, you probably won't be able to read this if you're first starting French, but maybe with just a few months of study in French, you could start reading through the story. Okay, let me see. I'm probably missing a whole bunch of uh, uh, questions here. Not that many, okay. How do you memorize words that you learn from the books? I am not a proponent of, um, I'm not a huge proponent of flashcards. You can do it. I have done it. They can help. My new favorite way of learning words in books is just by reading the books, but I read them over and over. Okay. Um, that is if I'm in the early stages of learning a language. Right now, my tie is not great. I can't just go pick up a novel that I'm interested 
and read it in Thai. Um, what I can do is find a short story in Thai and read that multiple times. Um, and the first time I read the story, I'm not going to know most of the words. I have to look them up. I have to listen to the translation. But after reading through a story three, four, five times, I remember the words. And then I don't need to look up anything. I, I might not be able to recall the words unprompted. But when I get to that word in the story, I remember what it means. Okay, and that's the first step. Um, and then if I listen, if I read the same story and listen to it 10 or 15 times, uh, I'm basically going to have the story memorized. I use this as an example all the time. Here, I, I crocheted this little zombie because of my new zombie book. Um, I use this example all the time. This book is called Malekera. And I've probably read this book 50 times. And um, I basically had the whole thing memorized back, back when I was reading it every day. Um, and there's some grammatical constructions in here that I wasn't familiar with. Um, and I became familiar with them. I also will never forget the Thai word for seed because, you know, or the Thai word for carrot, right? Because that's some vocabulary in the book that's repeated it over and over. And every time I read the book, I just keep getting exposed to those same words. All right. That was what I had in mind when I created this zombie book. And here, I'm just going to show you the Esperanto version. No, not the Esperanto version. I'm going to show you the, um, the Tokipona version of the story. I decided that I would give away this Tokipona version of the story for free um, because I had some very kind people who were uh, willing to translate and narrate it for free. Um, so if you're interested in the Tokipona version of the story, go down into this, the description of this video and there's a link there where you can just get the ebook for free as a PDF. Okay. Um, so the way the story works is, well, you can scan the QR code, you can, uh, you know, click the link and then it'll bring you to a YouTube video of someone reading this story. Uh, the Golden Orchard. I found him on Twitter and he was very kind. He narrated the story. All right. Here is Tokipona. All right. The story is written in Tokipona. As you can see, Tokipona language doesn't use capital letters at the beginning of the alphabet or at the beginning of the sentence. All right. And what this says is this is Matthew. Matthew is afraid. This is a zombie. The zombie is hungry. All right. And I don't know. In my opinion, this story is instantly more interesting than John went to the cafe. John ordered a coffee. The waiter brought him his coffee. Right. So that's why I chose zombies. I also have little... Um, uh, like glossaries down at the bottom, vocabulary words that you might not know. All right, and then it goes through the story, you know, characters getting chased by zombies. Um, and and it, it's just simple, you know. Um, and then later on, we have question and answers. Now, these are very simple question and answers. It's not actually designed to test your comprehension, okay? Um, it doesn't really matter whether or not you understood what happened in the story, in my opinion. What matters is if you can understand how these sentences are formed, all right? So it asks questions, it gives very simple answers, um, and that's just designed to get you familiar with how questions are asked and how to respond with answers, all right? So that was level one, the beginner. Now you move on to level two. And as you can see, the sentences are longer. It's in paragraph form. There's no pictures, right? Um, at, at, but it's the same story. So after you, read, after you read the first story, you understand the idea of the story. Then you go through and read a slightly more in-depth, slightly more... Uh, linguistically complicated version of the story, you learn more vocabulary words, you learn more grammatical constructions, right? And then finally, the level three, you go through and um, it's just a lot deeper. 
The story is slightly different and designed to hold your interest just a little bit longer. Um, and as you're reading, you're learning, you're, you're reading the same story. So you already understand what's happening. You're not confused, uh, but there's just some more details, more uh, complicated words. Uh, so, so you're always learning something more every time you read through you know, each version of the story. And that is the way this story is designed. All right. I'm sorry. I'm just looking at some of the, the comments here. How many languages do you speak? I'd say more or less five. I, I'm learning Thai, which would be my fifth language. Yeah, Zurify says that zombie is cool. Oh, you're talking about the one I made or the one in the book? I my original thought was that I would mass produce a whole bunch of these zombies and then give them away along with a copy of my book as a promotion. Um, but it took me a while to make this guy, and also he doesn't look anything like the zombies in the book. So I don't know. I think I'm just gonna leave him up there as my mascot. So I know I'm missing some comments here. Let me see here. Forever Learning French says, I like the glossary and the illustrations in level one. Thanks. Um, uh, Moonless Bud is from the UK, uh, currently learning Thai. That's because uh, who someone at uh, Jose Gonzalez is his first time here. Asks where everyone's from. All right. Uh, let me see what else. What else am I missing in here? Oh, uh, someone commented. I don't know if you guys saw the uh, the thumbnail of this video. I made it really quick yesterday, <laughs> and I first posted it as uh, what does it say? It says uh, new language learning books. And at first, it said uh, new Lenu gauge. <laughs> I switched up the U and the G. Excuse me. Um, so I actually noticed that about one minute before this stream went live. So in the last minute before the live stream, I was rushing to really quick go back to my uh, my my uh, photo editor and and change around the spelling of the thumbnail. Um, also, there's so this book is going to be available in uh, Kindle. Um, also, the free version on. Uh, uh, the free talking pointer version is just going to be available as a PDF on Google Docs. But there's also going to be um, uh, paperback versions, which are just slightly different. Um, I'm going to give it a little note section uh, just so you can write down uh, any words that maybe you don't, that words that you're not familiar with, but they weren't in the little glossary. Um, or write down notes that you have about the. Um, uh, the grammar of the story, or you know, if you go over it with a tutor or something like that, then you have a little place to just write down what you learned. So there's that. Um, I don't know if you guys have, I don't know if I've mentioned this before. Oops, what am I doing here? Um, there's also, I just found this new company. New company. Let's go to Amazon. It's called Diglot, I think. They, they have um, uh, classic stories that are in the public domain, like Sherlock Holmes, Alice in Wonderland, Pride and Prejudice. And the idea is really cool, where you read through the story, and it starts off entirely in English. And uh, as you read through, they start to just use words in your target language. Um, you know, so, you know, the first line of... Pride and Prejudice is, uh, oops, first line in Pride, Pride and Prejudice is something like, it is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of good fortune must be in want of a wife, right? And so that line will be in English. And then the next one, next line might use one or two French words. And then as you go through the story, uh, you're just reading a novel that's interesting to you already, you know, if you want to read Sherlock Holmes uh, or if you want to read Pride and Prejudice. 
Um, so it's not like you're working really hard to learn a language, but as you read through the book, it starts to transform more and more into words in your target language. And never tried it. Don't know for sure that it would be great, but it seems really useful to me. That seems like a good strategy because anything you can do that will take your mind off the fact that you're learning a language is good. You know, um, Stephen Krashen's theory of comprehensible and compelling input. Half of the theory is that it should be compelling. All right. And what compelling means is that you're not just reading something interesting, but you're reading something so interesting that you forget you're reading it in another language. Or at the very least, uh, you you remember that it's in a, you notice that it's in another language, but you would want to keep reading it whether or not that story was in your native language, right? Um, there are some stories that I read. I've been going through Thai Pod 101. Unfortunately, this is really difficult to do for Thai because there just are not many good resources out there for learning Thai. Like people don't write stories in Thai for the benefit of people learning Thai. Um, you know, there's children's books in Thai that are designed for children who are already fluent in Thai. But there's no one, there's no books or stories out there for me, someone who is learning Thai as a non-native speaker. Um, and so what I've been doing is reading through some stories on Thai Pod 101. And that's fine. Here, I'll share my screen with you again. Thai Pod 101. Okay. Um, you know, Thai Pod 101 is okay. Go to my lesson library. Uh, extensive reading in Thai for beginners. All right. So like, for example, yesterday I was reading about the planets. Okay. And I'll show you this story. All right. It, it's a story that goes through the planets. Like here we live on Earth. You know, uh, talks about the sun. You know, and here's Mercury, right? And Mercury is the closest planet to the sun. Here's Venus. Here's Earth. It's the only planet we know of that has life. Here's Mars. It's red. You know, it's, you know, uh, Jupiter has rings. or has stripes made of, they're red because they have iron in them. Saturn has rings made of dust and ice, right? And that's fine. I'm reading... You know, I'm reading Thai, um, but I'm not reading this story because it's interesting to me. I am reading this story about the planets because I want to learn Thai. And if I already knew how to speak Thai, or if I already knew how to read Thai, uh, I would not be reading this. Okay. Okay. Now, they do their best to keep things interesting. Um, and let's say, I wouldn't say they do their best. They, you know, they, um, the, the interest, the inherent interest in this story is that it's in Thai. Okay. There's no other reason for me to read that story. What I want to do is start filling the world with stories that are interesting in and of themselves. And they happen to be designed for people learning the language. Okay. That's why um, the first, uh, the first story that I wrote, let me pull up Amazon again. The first story that I wrote was about this little dragon. And um, I thought it was, kind of cute and fairly interesting. Um, you know, there's some plot twists and stuff in there. Uh, and I just meant it to be sort of silly and entertaining and hold people's interest that way. I think my mistake was, uh, this looks like a very much like a children's book. <laughs> and it's not for children. I mean, children can read it. It is, you know, sort of a storybook. Um, but it's, 
meant for anyone learning a language, right? I wanted it to be able to keep the interest of someone who's learning a language and hold their interest just long enough to get them through the story um, and give them an experience reading in their target language. So that's why I decided to go with zombies for this next one, because I thought maybe that one, that's a little bit, this book to me doesn't look quite as much like a children's storybook. <laughs> um, you know, and that, that's the, the point behind that. When you read something, it should be compelling. It should be interesting enough to finish reading um, without doing so just because it's in your target language. And I know I'm missing a whole lot of people's questions here. Ah, okay. Moonless Bud said, where can I get hold of your first book and tie? It doesn't appear on Amazon. Yeah, so um, you, you'd have to email me about that one. For um, So one of the problems is that Amazon only, um, Amazon, or Kindle, and Kindle Direct Publishing, which is what I use, they, there's only a few certain languages that they offer. Um, so, like, I can't host an, a Kindle book uh, on Amazon that's in Thai. So, what I did is I just made a PDF, and then you'd have to email me if you're, if you're interested in the PDF. Uh, I can put my email in here. Um, it's fingtem.languages at gmail.com. All right, and so that's the... Um, that's what you would need to do if you're if you're interested in the Thai version. Sorry, I should have mentioned that earlier. Um, okay. Okay. Aside from Thai, have you considered learning other languages from South Asia, like Vietnamese, Malay, or Filipino? Um, no, not really. Uh, well, maybe a little bit, um, because I I don't learn languages just for the sake of learning languages. I learn a language if I think it's going to be useful for me. Eh, to some extent. I mean, I learned Tokipona. I started learning Tokipona because it's fun. Okay. But um, I don't have any desire to learn a language if I'm not going to go to that country. Uh, with the one exception maybe being... Uh, I heard that Indonesian, Bahasa Indonesian... Is a really easy language to learn. So I might someday give that a try just for the sake of having the experience of, of just seeing what it's like. But who knows? We'll see. Um, Aggie says, sorry, I'm late. Uh, looking forward to someday reading an old school murder mystery. For example, the Agatha Christie or uh, Earl Stanley Gardner translated into French. Yeah, um, that's exactly what you want to do. Um, find some story, like if you're interested in murder mysteries, then absolutely 100% to try to find a murder mystery in French. I'm trying to think if I've read any murder mysteries in French. I read Goosebumps in French. Uh, those are interesting. Um, I feel like I just, like I have, but I can't put my finger on it right now. Can't remember. I'll, I'll let you know if, if it comes back to me. Um, Khalid says, what do you think about reading from song lyrics? I know it's not good for learning daily conversation, but it's interesting enough to keep myself reading it. Absolutely, 100%. Yeah, I think song lyrics are great. Um, song lyrics are uh, they're repetitive, so you get lots of reps every time you listen to the song, and they're catchy, right? And a song can start off is already compelling. It, the song, you can listen to a song and enjoy listening to it with no idea what the song is saying. So I think listening to music is a great way to learn a language. Now, you have to be careful. Sometimes in songs, they say things in a strange poetic way, right? Um, sometimes they, they take some creative liberties with the language. But by and large, I would say um, learning a language with songs is it has been really helpful to me. And somehow it's just easy to remember the words in a song. 
Dueling Champ says, I always find books that are translated into other languages to be a little lacking, as in subtle nuances are lost and sometimes words are not accurately translated or even are a poor substitute. Yes, that's absolutely 100% true. Um, so I have a book up here. Here it is. Le Petit Ponce is a, uh, it's a children's book in French, but I find it to be very charming and uh, pretty interesting. It, it, you know, even as an adult, th this, this book is kind of deep and it holds my interest enough even as an adult. And I've read this book probably four or five times, um, but that's in French. Okay, now I've also read it in Esperanto, and you know, you're right. When you translate something, it loses a little bit. It loses, it loses, the translation is never quite up to par with the original, okay? Now, um, for beginners, that doesn't matter very much because um, your level in the language just isn't quite up to the point where uh, where it would make that much of a difference, okay? As you get higher and higher, um, you can just find something interesting in the language. Like you, if you're gonna read a, a novel, you can find a, lang a, a novel that was written in your target language, right? So um, if I'm gonna read, if I'm learning Russian, I would love to read uh, crime and punishment in Russian. Okay. But I'm learning Thai and no matter how high I get in, in learning Thai, I'm never going to want to read crime and punishment in Thai. I would rather read some novel that was written in Thai. If you're learning French, don't read crime and punishment written in French. Uh, read Les Miserables or the three musketeers or or the little prince, something along those lines. All right, forever learning French says, J'ai appris beaucoup de nouveaux mots en lisant Le Petit Dragon. Merci beaucoup. Yeah, um, th and that's what it's meant for. You know, it's just meant to expose you to new words in a fun way. Right. Um, I realize that a short story isn't something you're going to read forever, but you read it three, four, five times, uh, then you're getting exposure to those words in context, in the context of a real sentence. Okay. And then uh, it's designed to grow with you, right? So as you progress and you, you learn um, more and more French or more and more Spanish or more and more Tokipona or whatever, you're going to be able to uh, read the beginner portion at first. And then reading that beginner portion it gives you the basis, the, the summary of the story. And then you move up and uh, you're a little bit more competent at reading the the intermediate chapter because the intermediate chapter is the same story as the beginner chapter. And now you can just read it a little bit better. Okay, Moonless Spud has emailed me. Great, thanks. All right. Um, I also like song lyrics. Yes. I mean, again, song lyrics are a great way of reading. <laughs> Sadly, Thai music is so bad. No offense to my Thai friends. Haha. <laughs> yeah, I found some Thai music that I thought was pretty good. If you want, I can share my Thai music Spotify playlist. Although I don't know if you uh, have the same taste in music as I do. <laughs> Jack Elfring says, I have loved reading The Little Dragon. Any plans on having it published in more languages? Um, my original plan was that I would keep having it translated in more and more and more languages. Um, so the problem is <laughs> with The Little Dragon, at least. that was, Now, The Little Dragon was my first attempt at writing a story. A language learning story. Okay, so I was really just doing it not necessarily with the intent of making money, but with the intent of like trying to figure out the process of publishing a, a book on Amazon. And it's a good thing that that wasn't my goal because I actually lost money <laughs> by publishing The Little Dragon. You know, I have to pay translators, I had to pay an illustrator, I had to pay proofreaders, um, I had to pay for the software to 
uh, to edit, you know, the PDF files and stuff like that. So uh, I didn't make any money on that, which was fine because it was a good experience. And, um, you know, maybe some as the little dragon sells more and more copies for years and years and years, maybe someday I will eventually make back the money that I spent on it. Um, but yeah, my, my original goal was, I was like, man, I already have the whole story written. So all I got to do is like, maybe, you know, I can send it to a Swedish translator and then to a German translator and then, you know, then to an Arabic translator. And I can just keep, keep getting it translated into more and more languages. Um, but didn't work out. So I'm hoping, uh, that with my second book, the, uh, uh, zombie girlfriend, maybe this time around, I will make back the money that I spent rather than losing money. And then maybe my third time will be a charm and I'll actually start making more money than I spent on the story. But, uh, who knows? We'll see how that goes. Um, I do think this is a really, uh, it's something that's really needed because there's so many books that are designed to teach you a language. Okay. Um, there's so many books designed to tell you all about grammar, give you some, some exercises and stuff. I don't want to do that though. Um, if I set a goal of forcing myself to go through a grammar book, I'll probably get through the first two chapters, maybe three, and then lose interest. Um, but if I have a book that's this size, full of not Esperanto grammar, but Esperanto stories, that's something I can do. I can read a story every night before I go to bed. Um, I don't lose interest as quickly in that. And that's something that is just desperately lacking, especially for people like me who are learning Thai. We are not spoiled with an abundance of language learning resources. Like I kind of got to scrape the bottom of the barrel to get something that will teach me Thai. If anyone is out there and you have the ability to write stories in Thai, um, or if you could do something like what I'm doing with the, the, uh, zombie girlfriend and the little dragon that is a much needed service because i don't know what else i can do to learn thai um and so yeah that's exactly the kind of service that i'm trying to offer to people learning spanish french tokipona especially tokipona because there's not very many books written in tokipona uh but also esperanto spanish and german um like I said, all of these stories will be uh, hopefully up and live on Amazon by the end of the week. They're just some of them are going through a, a review process right now. Um, okay, Aggie says, I've been using Link for several months and should give Le Petit Ponce another chance. The first few pages didn't hold my interest. Yeah, um, yeah, I mean, yeah, so Le Petit Prince is... It's a, it's a children's book, right? Uh, so if you are not in any way interested in fiction or stories, um, don't try to force it. Okay, find something that you are interested in. Uh, for me, I like the style of it. It's, I guess the only way I could describe this book is just kind of charming. Um, there's like this innocent, naive little prince uh, who it's just sort of learning about life and learning about reality, how the world works. Um, but find something that will hold your interest. Yeah. Maybe give the, the Petit Prince, give it another try. Maybe, maybe tell yourself, I'm going to read 15 pages in this book. And then I will decide if I'm going to keep going, but I will not stop reading until I've reached the 15 pages, you know, uh, maybe set a goal like that. Okay. Um, Turntable Studios. If you're not interested, then don't read it. LMAO. Read what you want to. Yeah. That's that's good advice. Kuchipat says, as a Thai, many Thai musics have so many cliches and not quite creative. Yeah. 
Yeah, I hear that. Okay, why don't you survey the community to see what book they'd read? I'd never read Little Dragon with the... I'd never read uh, Little Dragon with a Zombie Girlfriend. Yeah, well, that's two separate books. Um, but yeah, no, I'm I I agree with you. Yeah, and I I, uh, I have asked, like I've done polls and stuff on my uh, YouTube channel, uh, to see what people would be interested in reading. All right, um, I'd be up for that, but I'm not Thai. Yeah, I hear you. Okay, how about, or how have your italki lessons been going? I'm going to start using that much more in the new year. Now my vocab uh, base can actually come from a single conversation. Um, I, so my italki lessons were going pretty good. Um, we had been, just been reading through stories together and then practicing having conversations, which is what I needed. Over the past week or like two weeks, I've been so busy working on these zombie girlfriend stories, you don't realize how much work goes into having to coordinate all the translators and proofreaders and then like compiling it all into um, like 12 different PDF files, uh, you know, uh, six different languages in, in the ebook and then six different files for every language in the paperback books and then proofreading and then um, coordinating proofreaders uh, and, and then uploading them all and and uh, also the narrators. And then I do two different versions for each narration, um, a slow version and a more casual normal speed version, right? Because I find when I listen to um, when I listen to a narration of a story, if someone's just speaking at normal speed, it's really hard for me to understand what they're saying uh, in my target language. So I, um, so what I do for this story is I have the narrator read the story twice. Once is very slow and clear, so you can hear each individual word as you read along. And that's very helpful to me to be able to hear the individual words as I read through. Then once I do that a few times with the very slow version, and I can understand most of the words now, well, now it's too slow. <laughs> and now now I want to hear what a translator, or now I want to hear what the narrator sounds like when they're just speaking normally at a normal speed. Um, so that's why, uh, so that's why there's two versions. Um, it's also just a way to help you progress upwards. Um, so anyways, all that to say, I've been spending a lot of time working on this and I haven't been doing, I've normally been doing three Thai conversations a week of half hour each, um, two on italki, and then one with crew mom who's just doing this for me for free. Uh, and then I've been posting uh, her, uh, my conversations with her on uh, here on YouTube. Um, but, over the last two weeks, I've only been doing my one conversation with crew mom. But now that the story is out there and, and getting put out there, I'm going to be going through moving because I'm moving back to Thailand in a week. Um, and so I'm going to be going through that process. And then hopefully while I'm in quarantine in Thailand, I'll be able to start getting back into italki. Anyways, that's all that to say. Um, I, talk, I haven't been doing italki for like the last two weeks, but I will get back into it once life settles down a little bit more. Um, Moonlit Spud says, I'm going to start using that much more in the new year. Now my vocab base can actually uh, form a single conversation. Right. Yeah. The one thing I would say about italki is um, be careful who you hire on italki because when I have an italki conversation. I am not looking for someone to teach me their language and bring me through a textbook or something like that. I am just looking for someone to have a conversation with in Thai and someone who will be patient with me, someone who, who will help me when I'm stumbling over all of my words. And, um, 
you know, someone will, will who will help take a targeted approach to me learning certain vocabulary words. Okay, now that that's very different from someone saying, "All right, here's your list of vocabulary words. Memorize them. Here is the grammar." thing that we're working on this week. No, I just want to have a conversation with someone and practice using the Thai that I've been learning on my own time. That's what I want. Italki, yeah, it's very good. Jose Gonzalez has never heard of that. Okay, um, Moonless Bud says, I suppose uh, when you're in Thailand after quarantine, you can have the conversation practices with real people. Yeah, um, Italki is still just nice because, um, I don't know, it's just convenient. But yes, I can have more conversation with real people for sure. Dueling Champs says, Aaron, have you ever participated in NaNoWriMo, National Novel Writing Month, or anyone here in the chat? I've never participated in it. I have heard of, of it. I actually did write a novel a few years ago. That was on Amazon too. I think I took it down because I wanted to do a new edition of it. Okay. Um, suppose when you're in Thailand after quarantine, you can have... Oh, yeah. I thought you were planning to move to Canada. What's with Thailand again? Yeah, uh, my hope is to go to Thailand for like the next six months and then go to Canada after that. So nothing has changed there. Um, okay, I think I've basically reached the end of the comments. Um, so anyways, for anyone who's just joined, um, that's... You know, we talked about why reading is so important in your target language. And then I have been shamelessly promoting my own book, which you can find in the description below. Find the link to Amazon. Uh, it's going to be available in French, Spanish, English, Esperanto, Tokipona, and German. Although not all six of those languages are live. Um, and it will also be available in a Kindle ebook version as well as a physical paperback version for each of those languages. Um, if, if you don't see them up live right now, um, just go take a look uh, at, and by the end of the week, they will be live. So anyways, um, I hope that's helpful to you guys. Um, and I guess that's it. So I will talk to you next Friday. Actually, maybe not. I probably will not live stream next Friday because I'm gonna be moving. So I take that back. Uh, anyways, peace out.